In this video, we'll talk about how unemployment is measured, the different kind of measures, and their weaknesses. To define unemployment, let's first think about how the Bureau of Labor Statistics divides the population of the United States. There are three categories, employed, unemployed, and not on the labor force. Employed people are paid employees, self-employed, and unpaid workers in a family business. Unemployed people are those who are not working but are currently looking for work during the previous four weeks. Lastly, not in the labor force is everybody else. The definition of the labor force is equal to the people that are employed and those that are unemployed. The unemployment rate, or U3, is equal to the ratio of the people that are currently unemployed divided by the labor force times 100. Similarly speaking, the labor force participation rate is the ratio of the labor force to the adult population times 100. Please uh, pause this video and look back at the definitions we just covered and let's make sure we understand. So for this active learning exercise, I would like you to do is compute the labor force, the unemployment rate as measured by U3, adult population and labor force participation rate using this data on the adult population of the U.S. as of April 2020. So please take a minute to calculate all these statistics and reply on top hat. Thank you for your responses. Here are the solutions. It is pretty straightforward. You just plug in the numbers from the table. Now, something that is worth mentioning at this point is the unemployment rate. This U3 statistic is the official unemployment rate in April, as of April 2020. Uh, this is a especially high number, considered um, that we had the lowest unemployment rate in a very long time, just a few months before. But the um, pandemic related to COVID-19 uh, made this unemployment rate um, jump from the slowest to one of the highest we've seen in a very long time. Now let's dig deeper into our measures of the unemployment rate and other labor force statistics. The United States is a mosaic of uh, la labor markets. And for that reason, the experience of one group of people, whether geographically, by age, or other demographic characteristic, is likely to be different all across the United States. The BLS publishes these statistics for all the demographic groups within the population. And these data revealed widely different labor for market experiences for these groups. So let me share just one of them. In this table, you have the labor force statistics by educational level as of April 2020. As you can see, on the left hand side, we have the education level of a particular group of the population growing from the least to the most. So on top, we have individuals who have less than a high school degree. Their unemployment rate is currently at 21.2% and the labor force participation rate is 42.8. This is less than half of the people in that category participate in the labor force. When we take a look at those workers with a high school diploma, 17.3% is their unemployment rate. And as you can see, the labor force participation rate is higher at 54.6. As we keep going down the list, there's something that becomes apparent. As workers have more education, their unemployment rate decreases. This is even at a, um, at a terrible time during the COVID-19 crisis. Similarly speaking, as you increase the amount of education you have, a worker is most like, more likely to participate in the labor force. So we can uh, have a couple of takeaways here. One is that um, your ability to participate in the labor force or your likelihood of being in the labor force increases as you attain more and more education. And if you would like some insurance against unemployment, then pursue education. 
For this next active learning exercise, I would like you to focus on what happens to the unemployment rate uh, on three cases. Now, these are to show you that the unemployment rate has its limitations. So please take a minute um, and submit your answers on top hat. Thank you for your responses. So let's take a, scenario, a look at a scenario A. Sue lost her job and begins looking for a new one. In this case, the unemployment rate increases and the unemployment rate gives us the impression that the labor market is worsening, which in this case it is. Let's take a look at scenario B. John has been out of work since last year and becomes discouraged and stops looking for a work. In this case, John can be classified as a discouraged worker. Is one that would like to work but has given up looking for jobs. Now, in this case, we classify John as not in the labor force rather than unemployed because he's currently not seeking a job. So, in this case, the unemployment rate falls because John is no longer counted as unemployed. But this falling unemployment rate gives us the impression that the labor market is improving but is actually not. And this is one of the things that happened uh, that happened during the 2008 recession. In the Great Recession, we saw that labor market signals were confusing. On one end, we had a very sharp decline or in increase in the unemployment rate, while at the same time, a very sharp decrease in the labor force participation rate. Those two forces made the unemployment rate uninformative. So, there is a problem here because the official U3 measure of unemployment does not count discouraged workers. For the last scenario, we have that Sam lost his $80,000 job and takes a part-time job at McDonald's until he finds a better job. In this case, the unemployment rate does not change because a person that is employed, whether they work full-time or part-time, um, still get counted. Now, clearly, things are getting worse for Sam but the unemployment rate fails to show this. So this is another reason why the unemployment rate is not a perfect measure to, um, for the conditions in the labor market. As illustrated by the previous scenarios, the unemployment rate has some limitations. It in fact is not a perfect indicator of joblessness or the health of the labor market. It excludes discouraged workers. It does not distinguish between full-time and part-time work or people working part-time because full-time jobs are not available, and some people misreport their work status. However, it is an incredibly useful measurement if we're thinking about the health of the economy at the national level. As I mentioned before, the BLS calculates statistics for different locations and demographic characteristics, so if you'd like to know more about the particular situation of the labor market where you live, you can find those statistics at their BLS website. Other than the demographic characteristics, the BLS also publishes six measurements of underemployment in the United States, out of which the official unemployment numbers is only one of them. So I'd like in this active learning exercise for you to research what those are. So please use a search engine and look for the PLS's news release. On this latest news release, find the unemployment situation section and then search for table A15. You'll find all the information that you need there. Please uh, submit your answers on top hat.